Hello everybody, it's uh, CS230 time again and um, I decided to have another look at the assignment that, uh, that we're working on this week, assignment 3. And yesterday I uploaded a, a little demo program, um, this one essentially, that allowed us to be able to create this table um, from a data model. And then I automatically generated a table from the data model. Now, there was a couple of problems yesterday um, I noticed um, when I was looking. First of all, it calculated the average incorrectly because it was calculating it from the, the, the overall number of, of um, columns rather than the number of assignment columns, but I fixed that. And then in the actual specification, I did say that if you had a percentage column, it should have an average percent and square back. So I needed to fix that really just to make it look a little bit better. So, I had a few questions and thanks. I had some positive feedback for the last video um, and uh, I, I appreciate that. And so I decided um, in, I'd follow on with some of the questions that I got from you. So one of the things people were asking about was this piece here about the column. People were also asking me about, about um, saving the state of the table to a cookie or do I need to save it to a variable? I don't really mind what you use as long as you can save and restore. So that's okay. Um, I would like to save it personally to a cookie because it means that when I come back to the, the, the next day or the next time um, after I leave the actual um, page then I could also hit restore and I could get back to where I was working essentially. And the other thing about it of course is that when you, you may get to a point where you've got buttons for adding columns or removing columns and then you save the state then you might add another column another row then when you want to restore the state you need to overwrite the full um, table. And I just hope that's clear and um, really that, that that's what's required in this particular case, you know. And, you know, you could actually have a stack and push all those strings if you like. Like I have, I, as I, I said to you, you know, I have the state of the table stored as a as this model here. And in principle, every time I hit, I could have a, a save button. And every time I hit the save button, and it could have um, a stack. And I keep pushing this onto the stack and I could actually go backwards and forwards to the stack to save and restore as, as I move. So having the strings or the changes that you might have to those strings is, is a nice way to do that. But that's that's not part of the assignment. But anyway, so really what I was interested in doing now is I was interested in looking at this column here and saying, well, how do I get to this, you know, from the actual average? Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I have a model, of course, and so I'm able to just generate from the model and I take the value that's in this particular column and I can just generate that. Look, you'll notice that it's 41 here, but when I display it, I actually make it 41%. So the view that I have is slightly different from the model. But what happens if I want to have a different view? And so, for example, if we went to the assignment table, well, it tells us we have to have this kind of uh, percent grade, a letter grade or 4.0 scale grade, and um, you know, for average percent, for average letter and for average 4.0. So I need to switch between those in some ways and, and we want to be able to, um, to do that. So how do I do this? Well, at the very beginning, you know, on the outside, I'm sure all of you have done this already, um, is you need to be able to have some way of converting between the percentages and the, the, um, the grade that's displayed. So we need to implement this table. So I have, uh, I mean, I'm, very simple way of doing this. Um, so what I've done is I have a little, a little uh, external JavaScript file here called grade convert, and I have three functions in here. Three, and one is to convert uh, a, a value to um, a letter grade, and to convert it to a GPA grade. That American 4.0 is a GPA grade average, and then I have one to convert to a percent grade, and that's the simplest. Okay, because all that does is adds a percent to the string and returns it. So for the grades, for the other two grades, they're pretty much the exact same function here. And really what's going on is I will like, sometimes you might be passing a string or a number that looks like a string. So that's why I'm, I'm actually um, converting it to uh, a base 10 integer here. Then I have a grades um, object here. Basically it's an array, it's a hash. So, you know, I know that this is the value that corresponds to this and higher. This is the one that corresponds to this and higher and so forth. And then, so I start off and assume that um, the basic grade is a fail, okay? And then we improve this. And so I use the sum function that like, you know, um, on the keys from this, okay? And I iterate until some truth happens, until the actual grade that's, um, that's being iterated over is less than or equal to, sorry, is less than or equal to the number that uh, has been sent to us. And then I return true, and then I just return the grade. It's a fairly straightforward approach to doing this. Um, where you iterate until truth. So, you know, you assume it's false and then you 
iterate over all of them. And that gives us the grade, the letter grade that corresponds to the, the number. And then I have the, the GPA grade that corresponds to it as well. Again, these are just strings, so it's nice and it's very easy. And, you know, I wrote a little program here that tests this. Um, so um, I have a, an array of grades, a very simple array of grades. There's lots of ways of doing this. And this is one way to do it. There's a few of them here. And um, so we could just have a grade array that we've created, or I can randomly create a grade. Then I just log the grades, log the test grades to letter, to GPA and to percent, and then just to check, you know, to make sure it's all working fine as a manual one as well. So um, lots of ways of calling this. So if you look at this, um, that, that's there. Let's go back to this program here. And we look at the grades and, you know, I've got everything written right into the console. So every time I, I load it, I just get a new set of grades. And I have the grade numbers here. These are the letter, the GP average, and of course, 100 is an A. So that's what we would expect here. So yeah, that, that's working fine. And it's a way that I like to do some work is um, when I'm writing JavaScript and so forth, is I tend to, um, I tend to write everything to a separate little library, like uh, here. And then I have a sample test page, and then when I know it's okay, I start and I add these into my into my main program. So now this is the program that we had for generating the the, the table. So a couple of things I want to be able to do. Um, really, I just have this. So I'm going to use those great conversions whenever I want to write something to the screen. Right. Okay. So that's that's that bit done. So I'm decided I would change the functionality. So in your particular uh, exercise requirement, you have to click this column or click somewhere to change this columns from average percentage to average letter to average GPA and back and forth. It's kind of a toggle. Well, it's a toggle over three states. Okay, so that's what's happening. So I haven't implemented that because if I did this and give you the code, you have that straightforward functionality and I, I want you to figure that out for yourself. Okay, but what I've done is I've incorporated the, the three functions that, and I'll show you how I did that in a few minutes. Incorporated those three functions so that every time I create a table, it cycles through the GPA average. Again, ladder, average. Now it's not doing the same day. It's gen randomly generating data every single time, and then it's um, and then it's uh, doing this. Um, cycle through a toggle. So how do I do that? Okay, so at least so we know we know we have the functions that work and we have the um, uh, doing this with the data. You'll notice that I've just changed the styling a little bit here. So it's even though it's a, a number I wanted, didn't want my everything flush left or right or something. So I'm putting them down the center here. And so it's actually left aligning the, the, the grade um, with a padding here. And then um, I'm centering the percentage grade and I'm centering the average 4.0 GPA grade as well so that's fine and I actually do that styles of course back in my style as that's where you do that stuff so you know for cells that have a text align I align them left text that have a letter align and um, that's a letter grade align you know I align it left but I push it in so that it looks like it's in the middle and then I have a, a um, the percentage I center and the GPA I Right in line. I, I sorry. I I, um, I center as well. I mean, for example, I could just change this one here to right. Reload. Create a table, and you can see that they're now on the side here as well. So it's easy enough to do. Um, but we'll save that and put it back the way I, the way I wanted to have it originally. So, okay, there we go. So that's the tables. How does that work? Okay. Now, what I do, could do is I could take the data from the model that I have and then I display it depending on the current value of the presentation. So every time I click this button up here, I change the, the display value. So I toggling through a list of what the average that I want to display is. And so when the table starts to, to when, this, when the table start to run, it actually does this for you then and then it's nice, you know, it works out just well. Okay. And uh, so let me see, how would I do this then? Okay, so what I do is I, I go down here. Okay, so here's my display. So this is a little 
function that I call called toggle total display and it totals the display and sorry it, it, the total display changes you know from a percent GPA to letter and that's the value that controls so this is the one that controls the start off percent and I, I change it over time okay so that's nice thing to do so that's easy and then when I finish displaying my table I just call this display so it's fine now so what I need to do is that when I display my header here as part of my generating that table, I need to just display all of the columns over here. And then this is a separate one. The header will have a different header depending on, on the attribute. So here I'm actually looking at this cell's heading. Um, again, I'm creating a header element. The heading is initially a blank. And then I then set the title of that display depending on the current state of the totals display and then I append it so it's very, it's very straightforward so that's how we deal with this on a click okay okay so the next thing is the contents so in the contents then we do the exact same thing we actually iterate over all of the columns and then the whatever is displayed we just check the value of the totals display and if it's a percent then we add the percentage grade and if it's a GPA, we add the GPA grade, and we're using this function on the data from the model, okay? Now, I'm actually, what I did is that I think it's a good idea for people who don't have the model and they're just using the table to also include <coughs> the, also include the value that's displayed as an attribute in addition to the contents of the table cell. So what I would be doing then is I recommend that you, you um, when we create the table data, um, we end up uh, adding in some, where, where did I put this? Let me go down through this again. Um, I need to look at set, at, set attribute. Where is this? Where did I put this? Sorry. Oh. Let me search for it. Ah, here we are. Set attribute. Ha, ah, here we are. This is it here. Okay. Okay, so when we generate when I generate the data, in addition to adding the data that's displayed to the table element, I also set an attribute called the, the, the data attribute. So that contains the actual value, and then in addition to that, in addition to the value that's displayed. So if you have that, then you'll be able to look and check and be able to do that conversions yourself. So that's the way to do it. So set the attribute. And you see in this last one here, I actually have, I'm getting the attribute. And I'm using, I'm using the, the, app, the get attribute rather than actually using the data that's in my model. So there's two ways to do this. And we can verify this for ourselves. If we go here and let's have a look at the, to, uh, the developer tools. And let's have a look at the, what's displayed um, on the elements. Let's scroll down to the table. Um, so there's a whole bunch of divs there. Let's go down to the one that handles the table and let's go to the table the body and let's look at the last one, any of the rows. Let's look at, oh, not that row because it's the first row, the second row. And we can actually see that I added the data as a, an attribute in addition to the contents of the data, which is GPA. So if I, if I start again, we'll go down to this again. Obviously it's re recreated the table for us. And if we go down to this, look at this one, and we can see the date is 29 and the letter is F. So I'm actually retaining the, that data. So if you're updating a table with a click by just creating a column and you just want to manipulate the table directly, you know, how do you get the, the actual value when you've just got a, a letter grade here? Well, you can save that as a data attribute and then you can access that again. Okay, and that's an easy way to do it. Okay, so it's a straightforward way to do it if you're not going to use a model to generate your data. Okay. That's it. Um, I hope you find this useful and um, best of luck with the rest of the assignment. Thank you very much.